Hey guys, Jack from Tonic Paintball, and after a long wait, I'm finally doing the die rotor review. Um, first of all, I actually really do love this rotor. It's one of the best loaders on the market, in my opinion. Um, it has a really cool way of how it feeds. It's on like how the whole gear mechanism works. There's some parts in that, if like, you look at it, you think one part's the main component. There's only one moving part, and the rest is just gear on gear. It's really cool. Um, so just going to open up and see what's on the inside. Um, I have my manual and warranty card upstairs, but the manual is like a 28 page manual with like four different languages in full color. It's awesome. Comes in like this nice box. Then here's the rotor itself. I have a die 6.0 quick feed, but a lot of people have been, a lot of people have been telling me that like the 6.0 quick feeds fail very often and such. I have not had a problem, like they sag all the way down after like a month of use. I got this back in like December and have been straight playing with it, not a single problem. So another cool feature is um, it has the, un um, they did not label this, but I'm not sure if this is with all high end loaders, but it has an um, uneven feed neck. So when you put it in your gun, if you don't have a, a toolless clamping feed neck, this thing cannot come off. What happens is it's thicker at the bottom than it is on top. So when it clamps on, on top, even like I had this problem on the mini, even though you unclamp it, it's still stuck on because it won't get above that lip. So that's an awesome thing that die did. Um, it has a nice powerful lid when I use it. I normally use it as a rain lid. Like whenever I was at Xscape and it was pouring, I used that. What too bad. Um, this assembly is a breeze. Yeah, only pretty simple to use. On off, simple. It's pressure activated, so when it feels the tension and pressure, it just locks up. So basically how to take it apart is pretty simple. You just pull up on this little back piece, press this button, and kind of like pull forward like this motion. And then top piece comes off, the only thing in there is your speed feed. How to take your lid out, it's pretty simple. There are five screws here. Most of it's completely toolless. It's like one of the things that are not toolless. Take the five screws out, this entire red plate comes out, and then inside there are like little spikes, and with your speed feed, those spikes match up, and you put it in and then lock it back on. And if you want to take the lid off, there's a little pin in these little holes right here, so you just push the pin to one side and then pull it out. It's really easy. So basically, here's the hole inside. I'll get more detailed on that, but to get down farther than this, you just push forward on this little tray, it goes up. When the first time you have it, it's a pain in the rear end because um, because it's very stiff and you think you're going to break it. You, you won't, trust me. But it's basically here now we're to the batteries and the whole gear system. Um, it takes three AAA, ba uh, three AA batteries, my bad. Uh, three AA batteries and then here's the gear system. You push apart these two little notches and then here comes your top piece middle piece, your tray, and gearbox. And then if you pull up on this white piece, gearbox comes out, and then the entire thing is disassembled. It's that simple. So basically, here's the only moving pop part of the rotor. That's the only moving part of the rotor. What happens is, the main gear is that, but then the next thing it starts moving is actually this tray. It has little teeth on the side which line up and spins counterclockwise. And when this is fit, it's on the bottom with these little spikes here. Um, it spins the opposite direction while it spins. So basically this is pretty much stationary and then the um, little white gears in the center spin the opposite direction. And then when the red piece, the arm, goes, when it spins the counterclockwise, the red piece spins clockwise, and then the black piece fits on top right in the black piece. So no matter how you move it, it's always going to be a consistent feed. It's, and, space, and then once it senses, senses pressure, the gearbox stops, which makes everything else stop. And then when it, when it knows it's feeding, there's not as much tension, so that's how it feeds. It's a really reliable way of it happening. Um, battery life, it says it can get to about 100,000 shots, which I do believe that. 
Um, that's definitely true. The only thing is when um, the die rotor is actually on what they what in electric terms it's called a voltage, which means when you put brand new batteries in it, it goes really fast. But once you get to a certain point, it starts getting slower and slower and slower, just like maybe like a light on a like a light on something, like maybe a controller or something. If once the batteries start to die, the lights get lower and lower because they don't have enough as much power. That's exactly how the rotor is. If like you put batteries in it, it'll speak, it'll feed really fast, and then maybe about 50,000 shots later, it's still feeding perfectly fine. It's just slower. So that's one thing there. It's basically one. It's basically, I'll show you how this works. The anti-jam trigger is the white piece that's on the gearbox, and all it does is move the red piece. So when the red piece moves, the bottom red piece the gearbox, it moves the red arm. Um, it's that simple. And then when you stick your finger in, and it tries to feed, it doesn't do anything because it's pressure fed. And then it goes. And then you can do that midway. Once again, all it's doing is stopping and putting tension on it. So it's just like that. It's just a very good way. And assemblies of breeze. And simple as that. Um, it, it keeps up the thing going. Like, you can put thing on uncapped ramp. I use it on my Ego 7 with the uncapped ramp. And oh my gosh, that thing just rips up. It's it's so much fun. It has a pretty low profile, but a lot of people have been talking about the new Virtue Spire that came out. Honestly, I am very interested in it. If um, I have not had one, I don't have one yet. But I know a bunch of people who do, and from what they've told me, they said they wish they'd never gotten a rotor because the Virtue Spire is like that. So I've been researching it and seeing how it is better than the rotor, and I might tr sell my rotor and get a Spire, and then compare what do I like better and such but overall the rotor you can't go wrong with it you can pretty much get one used on eBay for like 120 to 150 depending on how like what version it is and such they're just hell of deals like you're paying you're paying for the quality definitely I honestly love the loader it's there's not really much to say about it the only thing that I don't really like about it is um the opening is kind of small, so when you put your pot up to it, it's only about the size of the opening, so that's a little bit of a pain. And um, it holds a lot of wrap. So basically, the only problem with it is when you try to like feed your paint, the um, speed feed's a little bit um, small. Not the speed feed, but I meant the opening. So when you put your pot up to fill, it's only about the size of the opening, which isn't really a problem for me. It's Especially because, like in airball, like I get it in, I get all the paint in necessary, and then in woods ball, you pretty much have all the time in the world, so it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference. Everything's cool about it. I love the way how um, how it's smaller, like thinner up top than down below. I really like that. This thing's durable as hell. It's mostly waterproof. Like you've all pretty much seen that Billy Wing video of it getting plunged into water and all that other stuff. I haven't tested that myself because I'm not taking any risks, but I believe that the rotor has extreme durability. It's also the fastest loader, 40 plus BPS easily, but you all probably know about that. But overall, it's a good loader. Um, a lot of people say, well, like my Halo, like I had a Halo 2, um, my Halo 2 is on there and it still feeds like 25 BPS and so there's not really much of a difference. It's actually weird because my Halo 2 is jammed so many times, it's not very fun, but um, when I use the rotor, the way it feeds, first of all, it's on, it's more of a downward slope and more, if it, with the lower profile, um, instead of the feeding tray in the back like a Halo, it's in the front, which generally, like if you have your gun down, it's always going to be ready to feed no matter what, right there because it's going to be facing like that. The only problem with that is if you try to shoot uphill, or like if you're on an air ball thing and you try to shoot uphill, it's like that. Overall, no complaints about the loader besides the speed feed, and they say it's a 200 round capacity even though you can only get about 180 into it, so that's 
So uh, it's not, it doesn't bother by me. It fits a pod and a little more in a pod, so it doesn't really matter to me. As long as it feeds it and looks cool and then has low profile, I'm fine. Low profile, honestly, you definitely tell a difference when you're going from a Halo to this. No doubt about that. Well, this is Jack from Tom Paintball. If you have any questions, um, go in the description and comments below and post a question. Also, check out pbgearauctions.com. They have they have really good gear for really cheap. It's a bidding site, and they have it's like markerbids.com. Only like very little people are on it right now, which means you can get some super cheap gear. Like a G6R went for like 26 cents, which at most that's like 26 dollars if some plus the 26 cents if someone put all 26 bids. So um, he's just starting out. He's so go check him out. It's definitely a good site. And if you sign up, you get five free bids just from the start. Well, anyways, this is Jack from Tana Paintball, and thank you for watching.